What's up, YouTube? Uh, <laughs> I love saying that. What's up, YouTube? Um, I'm going to try and fit the um, side object detection radars to the back of the car um, for the blind spot detection uh, built into the new mirrors that I put in in another video, uh, which I'll link, I don't know, here? Don't know if that worked. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to try and do it without taking the bumper off. Um, I am going to have to take the splitter out, which I installed in another video, um, and we'll see how we get on. So what I'm going to try and do is just remove this bit and then see if we can get away with... Because the radar detectors go, well, one there, about-ish, and one on the other side-ish, in the same place. Uh, and I think I might be able to reach up once I've removed that. So let's get that off. I'll just quickly show you how to remove the splitter. They don't unscrew, they kind of just pop out. Pop them, and then pull them, and then pull this bit out as well. Once you've pulled all four of those out, um, you should just be able to tug it and it will come off. Obviously, carefully. but firmly. There we go, and it's off. So from underneath the car, I can see the wiring loom. Up here, that is what plugs into the right-hand side radar detector thing. And the other one is there. So we just have to unclip them and feed them around the corner and get them plugged into the units. There's two studs sticking out above each back box exhaust. So here's the exhaust and the the, the bolts sticking out like around here somewhere. So these are the two units. Uh, left and right is identical. Uh, brackets are identical. Uh, yes, that's a bit rusty, um, but I'm not too worried about that. They are from a second hand car. This is going quite well so far. I've managed to uh, get the cable out of the driver's side. There we go. So with these, uh, pull the red tab out and then you can squeeze the fit to remove it and vice versa. When you plug it in, push the red tab back in. Like so. Will this go up without taking the bumper off? I think this might be a no. <laughs> Yeah, it's a no. Okay, we'll take the bumper off. So on both sides there's a reflector which you need to pop up and remove. And then there's two uh, torque head screws in there which need to come out. With a bit of a careful wriggle, this then comes out. And so it now looks like I have to take it the uh, rear light out. Great. Might as well undo this 10 mil while we're here. On the inside of the car, remove the cubby hole. Uh, just kind of lifts up, pulls out. Inside the cubby hole, you see this guy, he's got a nut on it, he's got to come out. And I've got a horrible feeling there's another awkward one in here. There. Right, I took off the easy one and the headlight doesn't come out. So, yes. We've got to take them both out somehow. Okay, I've loosened it. So what I've done is taken a normal 10mm socket, put it on the ridiculously long thread, and used grips to loosen it. And now I'm undoing it with my fingers. And the headlight, tail light, feels like it will come out after I've undone this. Bad news, there's a third one. I'm going to use the, uh, the grips and small socket. This one's a lot harder to get to. Okay, good news. Once you've got a grip on it, it will undo. Bingo, all three. This, yes, it's loose. Okay, I need two hands to unplug that, but, oh, actually, no, I can just stay there. We don't need to unplug that. Lovely. All right, easy, don't scratch it. 
Yeah, I unplugged it. I didn't want to damage it. Okay, cool. Now, the side of the bumper should pull off. Oh, we've undone a... That was a, an 8mm. 8mm bolt in here. And I'm going to try not to... Need to take the mug guards off because... The screws are well and truly rusted in there. So, in theory, I should be able to pull this bit of the bumper out of the mud guard. Yep. And then, I think it's the same as the splitter. Just to, oh, there we go, yes. Just a gentle, oh, okay, brilliant. Right, same on the other side. So, yes, that is definitely loose. So all I've got to do is take that reflector off, that panel out, that light out, and that bolt out. At this point, I'd like to remind you that there is almost certainly a YouTube video on how to remove a Jaguar XF estate bumper. Uh, I haven't watched it. I thought I'd just figure it out as I went along. Uh, you guys have seen the whole story. Hopefully this one's a bit easier to access. No, it's not. Okay, the lower two on this side are quite self-explanatory, uh, but the top one, I've actually popped this, popped this out, and then you can get your socket on there. Interestingly, this one wasn't tight. I'm assuming they couldn't tighten it from the factory because they designed it so badly. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Don't drop the nut. I've actually stopped recording myself taking the end of the nuts off because uh, I kept dropping them whilst recording and it was annoying. Oh, okay. Right, so, oh, I've missed the 10 mil. Every single job I start with this car, I wish I didn't start. But then, once I've finished, I'm happy. Normally you'd do this with two people, uh, but I'm gonna do it on my own because I don't have any friends. <laughs> Okay, I forgot about the parking beepers. Okay, so now we have real easy access to the two bolts that hold these radars on. A couple of new nuts, uh, M6 nuts. And then that will literally sit on there like that. Oh, or well, does it sit on there like that? That's a good question. I don't know. Oh, or does it go on like that? Don't worry, I Googled it. It goes like that. Tighty tighty. There we go, nice and tight. There is a thing to press it into there. Yeah, and that is supposed to go over uh, on the oh, underneath the nut that I've already put on. Okay, one sec. Like that. Done. Cool. Uh, same on the other side, I guess. This one's a bit rusty, so he gets uh, my little ratchet treatment. <laughs> Done. Right, now we need to fish the cable out, which is here. Just here, you can see, it's all wrapped up. So, unplug connector, and then I clip him from there, and he goes in there. Push on, click in. Done. Right, now we uh, put the bumper back on, I guess. Get the mud out. Hmm. Driver side has 
more crap in it. <coughs> oh, also worth mentioning, in here, you need to take this cable and plug it in to where this loop is plugged into. Unplug loop, plug in cable. This, this, the Jag is, um, is a 2015, so it's literally the last of the line, black edition. Uh, and I believe the, all the facelifts, if they've got the rear parking sensors, will have the wiring uh, for the rear radar sensors. Don't hold me to that. Get your head under there, have a look, see what plugs you've got. Easiest thing to do, pull open the right-hand side luggage bit, see if you've got that link cable. If you've got the link cable and the cable that's supposed to plug in there, you've got the, uh, the wiring in the back bumper for the um, radar sensors. Uh, it also means you've almost certainly got the um, wiring in the doors for the mirrors, which have the um, parking uh, not parking the blind spot detector in the in the in the mirror glass. Don't forget to plug your reversing sensors in. Ooh, sounded ominous. You know what? I'm just gonna check that they work before um, <laughs> committing to putting that bumper back on. Yep, they work. So, it should be easy. Don't scratch the paint. As far as bumpers go, it's quite an easy one. Okay, uh, bumpers back on, cars back together. Uh, now we need to tell the computers that it has blind spot detection. Okay, so when using Jaguar SDD, we need to fit a battery backup power supply. FYI, the negative goes on the spare wheel like that. You want a battery backup power supply that is goes up to 50 amps, 12 volts. Plug in. Mongoose into car, into laptop, loady loady loady, SODR and SODL have a tick, they are communicating, uh, so we need to change side object detection from not fitted to fitted, yeah, so change side object detection from not fitted to fitted on both entries in the description slot. Um, if you don't have STD and you're not familiar with it, get a Jaguar specialist to do it. Do not mess around with this if you don't know what you're doing. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Hmm. Okay, it says on the dashboard, uh, blind spot monitor not available. This has appeared in the service functions list. Uh, side object detection. It says right side, radar signal, reversal correction. I'm just going to try and run this. Hmm, well that failed. Ah, right, I was in the wrong place. So I need to go down to configure new modules, electrical, and they're both here. So I'm running the uh, right side first. Apparently if you run the left side first, it doesn't work. Okay, now it wants to download some stuff. Now it's doing something else. Right, so I believe it is sending the files to the car for those modules, hopefully. I'm getting all sorts of warnings while it's doing this. Okay, it appears to have done, but now we have uh, a dot on there, which is different. Well, computer says okay. Now it's doing something else. Okay, that completed. Now we have to do the same with the left module. Doop a doop a do. Ah, small problem. So now this tab's appeared extras and um, configure existing module left, configure existing module right. So I'm going to run these processes now. Doop a doop a do. 
Doopa 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 do. Ooh. Doing some stuff. Oh, all these error codes are coming back up. Don't know what these files are. Apparently, uh, I have no fuel. <laughs> Starting the software download job. Ignition on. Oh, blinky. So we still have uh, error light, which is what that little light means. Clear the fault codes. Now we need to run the left one. Doopa doopa do. Doopa doopa do. And we have a problem. Click continue, see what happens. No software parts available for this vehicle. Hmm. Okay, so I found that um, the software kept overwriting the file I'd modified. So now I've had to because it pulls it from a it pulls it from a zip file with all the other uh, chassis numbers in. Um, so what I've had to do is modify the one in the zip file. So when it pulls it out, it's already modified. So now we've modified the file in the zip folder uh, with the SODL and the SODR. Let's try it again. Let's see if this works. Configure new module. Eh -eh. Let's try it from the extras menu instead. Let's see how it likes to pull my modified as built data file now. Oh. Hmm, maybe. Nope. So this message means um, I cannot write the VIN number to the left module. Now it worked with the right module, so what I'm going to do is swap over the modules and try and relearn the right module with the VIN number and that hopefully will work. So I'm going to try and swap these modules around without taking the whole bumper off just by undoing the bolt at the bottom and pulling it off. It's quite accessible from here. Now they're swapped over, let's try again. Okay, so it's allowed me to uh, configure the module on the right-hand side again, uh, which is originally the left-hand side one, so I know both those modules are working okay. From the extras menu. Okay, we've got a failure occurred, uh, but I retried and that seemed to work. And now we have a dot in both mirrors. Awesome. And it says all parts were successfully downloaded. Although I've got some new f problems on here. <laughs> Clear the fault codes. Okay, this is good. Press brake, right, tailgate open. The tailgate's open because I've got a battery backup connected, obviously, because I'm running SDD, but it's not telling me I have a fault. And this says complete. Now it's doing a fault code clear. I'm starting to get excited. Okay, I've got no fault codes now. Um, well, apart from these, um, I think these might be something to do with the dynamic um, indicator lights that I fitted. Um... It obviously doesn't like them, but they work, so I don't care. Don't know what this is all about. This has always been here. No idea. Time for a test drive, I guess. Okay, so we have a dot on both mirrors, as you can see. Uh, I am in a private car park, so I'm going to drive and see if those dots turn out, turn off. Yes, it has turned off, and as I slow, it comes back on. Uh, that dot is to warn you that the system is not working because you're not going fast enough. So there we have it, it is working. I am happy. Um, I am gonna go try it out on a dual carriageway now, obviously not whilst holding the phone. So if you like this video, uh, hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll um, see you in the next one. Cheers.